Hi, I'm Michał Zwikowski, and today I want to explain you why Subriemannian normal extremals are locally minimizing. The talk is based on a joint work with Witold Respondek. So here is our motivation. In our previous publication, we studied geometric conditions for optimality in Subriemannian geometry. In particular, we gave a geometric characterization of normal Subriemannian extremals. On the other hand, it is well known that these extremals locally minimize length or the energy functional. So we wanted to understand how the geometry is related with the local optimality. So let us formulate the problem. We start with a manifold Q, a smooth distribution D on Q and a positively defined metric on D. The problem that we want to solve is basically the geodesic problem on Q with linear constraints given by D. That is, we look for curves on Q which join a given two points in a given time, minimize the energy functional and at the same time remain tangent to the distribution D. Candidates for such minimizing curves are indicated by the Pontryagin maximum principle. We call them subriemannian extremals. There are two classes of such curves called normal and abnormal ones respectively. Here we concentrate on the normal subriemannian extremals. To proceed we will need a few technical details. Without losing any generality, we may assume that D is spanned by a family of smooth vector fields being normalized and pairwise orthogonal. A choice of a time-dependent function u, called a control, defines a devalued vector field f of u. Now, every curve gamma on q tangent to d can be realized as an integral trajectory of such a vector field. We may further assume that f u is normalized to 1, hence the energy of gamma is simply the square of the L2 norm of u. By big F, we shall denote the time-dependent flow of the field F of U and by F dot of T perpendicular, the smallest distribution along gamma, which contains the part of D perpendicular to gamma and is invariant by the flow of F. Assume now that gamma is the trajectory of a time-dependent normalized vector field F of U. Then gamma is a normal subriemannian extremal if and only if it satisfies the following two conditions. First of all, gamma should be of class C1 with absolutely continuous derivative. Secondly, the distribution f dot of d perpendicular described before should not contain the field f of u, which is tangent to gamma, for any point of gamma. The first of these conditions is equivalent to the fact that the flow of the field f of u along gamma preserves the direction tangent to gamma. The second condition means that we cannot generate the direction tangent to gamma by acting by the flow of f of u on the directions perpendicular to gamma. If you want to know more about these conditions and subriemannian extremals, check our previous video on the topic. The link is in the description below. Now let us explain how these conditions imply local optimality. We take gamma, which is a normal subriemannian extremal, corresponding to the control u and another trajectory gamma prime which corresponds to the control u plus delta u. Now we construct a homotopy joining these two curves by considering intermediate controls between u and u plus delta u. We concentrate our attention on the curve of endpoints of this homotopy. In particular, we can find an analytical expression for the tangent vector of this curve attached to a point gamma of t. We can decompose this expression to the part tangent to gamma and perpendicular to gamma and then, by using the geometric conditions of the normal subriemannian extremal, further decompose the resulting tangent vector to two parts. By the second of the geometric conditions, these parts are distinct and by the first of the conditions, we can control the part of the vector which is tangent to gamma. It turns out that if the energy of gamma prime is smaller than the energy of gamma, then this tangent part is big and negative. To sum up, the geometric characterization of the normal subriemannian extremal gamma implies that if any other curve gamma prime 
has the energy smaller than the energy of gamma, then the curve of endpoints of the natural homotopy joining gamma and gamma prime has to wind initially backwards along gamma. If gamma is short enough, then the, this curve of endpoints has no time to go backward to the initial point gamma t. In particular, it is impossible to construct another curve which has the same endpoints as gamma but has lower energy. This basically means that gamma minimizes the energy functional, which was to be shown. And that's it. You can find the details in our publication. Thank you for your attention.